when you're training right now, uh, I don't mean right now. I mean, like when you're preparing, say, for the tour, um, how do you define your energy systems? You define them more by heart rate, by power, uh, by how you feel. Uh, what are you What are you using? I've been training with heart rate monitor since I'm, I don't know, 12 years old or even like 10 years old. So I would say I know how my body responds on, I mean, how my heart rate responds when I'm tired or when I'm good. So yeah, I could go by heart rate only, uh, but it's always good to compare heart rate to, to power but power meters are not so reliable uh, these days, I would say. Really? Um, yeah. You Which can one have, do you guys use, SRM? We have a Shimano power meter. Okay. But uh, yeah, you always need to be careful with the temperatures of the, the outside, the calibration, mm. everything. And uh, yeah, sometimes it can be off mm. and uh, you need to be careful about this. I, In my uh, experiences and uh, yeah, the best uh, is to train on your home roads where yeah. you can also look the speed, the VAM, how fast you're moving. What kind of VAM are you able to reach when you're training? Well, on a training, uh, seven, seven and a half percent. If you go all out, I think it's like 1700 to 1800 of VAM <laughs> for like 15 minutes. So uh, <laughs> that's just incredible. Yeah. I mean, people, I know that people listening might not appreciate that. I'm not going to take time to explain what VAM yeah. is. If they know what it is, they understand how crazy that is. If they don't, they can look it up. I'm happy when I hit a thousand, by the way, Yeah, <laughs> just so, for comparison. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah, it depends on the, on the gradient. No, but what I was trying to say is like, you can, you can You're see- You're using these other metrics. Yeah, you, yeah. you see all these three things, the speed, uh, heart rate and power, and then you see, you know, uh, how you, how you feel and uh, in which zone are you really in. No? And how much of your time are you spending at like a low intensity, whether we call it zone two, whether we just call it aerobic, how much of your total training time would be in that zone and not burning matches? Well, um, I, I, I love uh, riding zone two. Um, and uh, yeah, around where I live in Monaco, it's, uh, it's really hard to get a uh, big time in zone two because it's a lot of climbing and then you have all the downhills you cannot uh, yeah, you go zone two. Power. So yeah, I try to hit really high zone two on uh, on the climbs. They are like 20 to 40 minutes long and then uh, you recover in downhill. But when I go home to Slovenia or somewhere else uh, or in Spain when we're training in Calpe or somewhere where it's more flat, then uh, I really like to stay like five hours in zone two. True and, zone two. Yeah, and some trainings I would I would love to do just, just zone two and going nonstop. Uh, what is your heart rate at zone two? approximately uh when i'm fatigued it's uh like 140 145 when i'm a bit more fresh like around 150 to 155 and how many watts are you putting out at that heart rate like 320 to 340 again i know it's just hard for people who are listening to us to understand what that means three 320 to 340 watts for five hours keeping lactate below two keeping heart rate at 140 is really remarkable. Well, that's also another thing, no? In in Monaco on the climbs where I can recover after, I can do you can you cannot look zone 2 and say this is your zone 2 because you did two te 10 minutes test yeah, on yeah, this yeah. power because it's too much up and down. Yeah, and yeah. uh if you're doing 5 hour ride, your zone 2 after 5 hours maybe be not be your zone 2 anymore. So you need yeah. to also you always need to know at what time this zone two will not be your zone two anymore because on the flat you will not recover and five hours of riding of 320 to 340 for me is also next day I'm not uh, not riding the bike. So on the when I go on flat for longer, I drop power to 290 to 300. Do you track your heart rate or heart rate variability in the morning? Do, you, do those numbers... Uh, give you any indication of how you're going to train that day or race? Yeah, I started this uh, in uh, 2020 at first. I was especially in COVID time, lockdown. This me and my girlfriend we were doing that, but yeah, I did not um, find it really interesting or helpful. But this year I start using again uh, more um, to track uh, 
HRE heart rate in the in the night and yeah I must say that uh, I quite like it now to to track it but uh, yeah it's not something that uh, that um, it can it be could, misleading. It doesn't it can, necessarily it, tell. Yes. It can it can get in your head a little bit, yes. and you don't want it to tell you how you're going to train that day. Yeah, it can be misleading. It's almost uh, better for somebody else to look at it and yeah. tell you after. Well, my girlfriend, she had a really good method for a while, uh, especially in races. She don't open uh, in the morning. She opened it after the yep. the race, so she checked uh, after the race what was her heart rate variability in the morning, not in the morning. So she would not, uh, if it would be really low. Yeah, it doesn't mess with her mind. She would stress and then would mess with the race. So what, how much variation when you do look at your heart rate variability, how much variation do you have between a high day and a low day of HRV? Well, if you really, yeah, uh, on a really good day, um, I would say my HRV would be, I don't know, 120, 130. Maximum some days can pick up to 150. Wow! And then on uh, yeah on the lower end uh, would be also I don't know 35 could be yeah that much yeah, of a difference could be yeah. But is that from drinking alcohol the night before maybe? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so but uh, yeah, like on in the races in the uh, in the tour for example, and Giro was quite uh, quite steady around from from 80 to 110 was like average wow every day yeah that's that's pretty amazing and um and then resting heart rate do you care at all about that or do you see how much how much heart rate um range do you have so what's the lowest you're going to be at and then what is your maximum heart rate now versus five years ago uh the lowest i hit uh since i'm tracking i think was uh, 37 mm -hmm. but uh my average i would say is like in the night i think 43 42 um but some days i i could woke up with 48 49 if you're sick or really fatigued maybe even over 50. yeah and uh the max heart rate uh yeah when i was junior i could hit uh 213. yep um in but was shorter races and, and so now for example like now in the, yeah. yesterday 203 so was still pretty high uh <laughs> so i'm pretty happy about it <laughs> How often do you guys test VO2 max? Oof, yeah, since been it's been a while since I tested the last time VO2 max. Yeah, yeah interesting. And do you probably do, it's high? Yeah, I'm gonna bet it's pretty high. Yeah. So, um, and do you do you do an FTP test out of season just as a way to track it, like a a true 20 minute test? True 20 minute tests. Also, it's been a while since I've done one. Um. We do, I did uh, this year like fatigue test, um, when you repeat, uh, eight minutes of one power yeah. uh, and I mean, of going higher and higher power and then also all out. And normally we do a yeah, home trainer test, uh, in the camp in December. Uh, it's long from one hour to one hour 30 depends how you, how you really want, <laughs> how long you want to test to which uh, zone you want to test but yeah normally around one hour 20 for me uh, 10 minute steps on the home trainer and uh, every five minutes you take lactate from from the year to, yep. to check the, for the zones and i like to do it also at home with my girlfriend one one time i do for her you, see you test do, each yeah, other we test each other and uh yeah for people yeah. listening your girlfriend is obviously a very competitive professional cyclist She's, as well yeah yeah <laughs> if you guys have kids one day, look out. Oh man, <laughs> I, I don't want to put them in cycling though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a good idea actually, because they would probably have a very hard time filling their parents' shoes. So yeah, but they should pick up another sport. They could be better even, yeah.